Okay, Wednesday morning in the kingdom, and it's chilly here. Yes, even the house was chilly, and I had the windows closed last night. So this morning, we woke up to plus nine, but when I got up for a pee, I seen plus six in the middle of the night. I don't remember which time. All right, but it feels like plus seven. It is chilly. And then on the yo-yo scale, plus 48, but feels like 45. Yes, and according to Facebook memories, it was this time last year and the year before that I was working on the hot rod trucks, the 37 Dodge hot rod from 1984 and the 37 Dodge tribute truck in memory of my dad. So I think we're going to do some more on it today. We're going to need a relaxing day after working so hard on the long weekend. So we're going to do some fine tuning on that freshly freshened up carburetor and the distributor. We got three brand new ones in there. So let's beat on them and see why they won't work. And then we can take out the other one there and call it good and put it back on the shelf for the next occasion. All right, let's scroll this way. Yes, we should be cutting firewood. We should be doing lots. But I think I'll just say we're taking a week's holiday. Yes, everybody else takes a week's holiday. Poor Johnny G, he's catching up with the freight. Because the long weekend, everything bunches up. So he has to work hard and everything like that. I don't think he's bringing the beer today. I think it'll be on Fridays now. So I think that's now a year later. I think of beer days Friday officially. I remember all those years. It was on a Wednesday. Oh, those are good times. Oh, yes. Everything in the past was good times except for the marriage. Yes, the marriage. Okay. All right. Sir Rodney's also got parts packed up for the grader. We might actually get that project up and running this summer. Ooh, that'll be a first 20 years later. All right. So keep scrolling. That wind is chilly. And we're back here at the front. At the start, these flags here are taking a licking with the wind. But we got more coming. That's what I can see. We'll be building flagpoles for a while. All right, we better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, I got up this morning with the idea we're going to work on this motor and correct all the mistakes I've made. Yes, I make mistakes all the time. Yeah, that's part of learning. All right, so I've had the antifreeze drained, I think, what, three or four times on this motor since Saturday or whatever, or Sunday? So I finally got to drill out and drilled the thermostat. All you need is a little vent hole. Oh. Too close to the me phone it'll get confused and try to focus so you just drill it in there to let the air out i don't know what i was thinking for some reason it's instilled in my little mind i don't know growing up with dad is you never touch anything it's that's the way it is if it bubbles over or whatever but on the cats and the big trucks or the other equipment we drill the thermostat because that's the only way you get the all the antifreeze in because you're looking at 18 19 gallons of antifreeze but on this truck here it's like not very much all right so let's get to work here we now got oh these lips now that we got this done let's work on this this eight this hei distributor and figure it out because we got three new ones on the thing on the oh these lips all right let's try again we have three brand new ones sitting on the shelf there let's see if we can put a new one in and save this one here because we knew it worked in 2018 we'll write on it that it works again in 2024 oh my we're having fun i think Okay, I create my own problems and I say I do. It's like when I said I do. All right, so I went to all the work and put one of these brand new Darth helmet uh, HEIs in. And I wrote on there, runs, quits, runs, quits. Okay, and that was uh, 2022 or 2018 to 2022. And now I don't even do anything. I even took the top off to make sure because you're trying to push down on the ground. I even put a clamp on the ground and nothing, no spark, nothing. Dead as a doornail. So I think it's best I take these brand new um, HEIs and throw them in the scrap bin because they're made of aluminum. I seem to be just wasting my time trying to, how would you say, fart around with them. And the thing is, is I want to keep an HEI complete with the wires. So I, how would you say, ga gathered a bunch of wires here and over here is where I went picking through. Yes, we have ones that are broken, ones that are straight, and stuff like that. And we have the distributor I want to save as a complete unit. Like, I don't want to take it apart, because I know it works. So, let's go have a quick lunch, regroup. Maybe Jack Daniels will consult on this. Maybe a bigger sledgehammer, because I'm getting tired of this brand new junk not working. 
Okay, I had to know. So while I was flame broiling lunch in the microwave, I went on Rock Auto to see what they are. So a new one today, if I ordered today on August 7th to 2024, it would be $109.89 Canadian money. Remember, I'm in Canada. Yes, Wilderness, Alaska, but in Northern Manitoba. Okay, and then the shipping, like I've said, for every 100 you spend at Rock Auto, the shipping is 100. So it'll be 101.98 shipping. Tax is on 10.59, duty 14.89.92, so it comes to 237 dollars and 21 cents Canadian. So then, when you go to pick it up at the post office, there'll be another duty or a fee because that's the government of today. They charge the crap out of you. Please do not try to cross the border as an American tourist. Come to Canada, spend your money foolishly. You'll get charged and penalized. Yes. All right. So back in 2018, this one here. Cost me $23.96 shipping, and it was $101, I think it was. Yes, $101 or $102, somewhere in there. It wasn't bad. So the reason why we went to the new ones, okay, so you get all the aluminum everything, was look at these old ones. They're kind of rusted and the counterweights and everything. So we figured it out. By the time you buy the cap, the rotor, and fart around, it was cheaper to buy this. So now we're going to toss these in the shed. I don't know what for, so I can have drama and stress like when I say it, I do the second time. And we'll go find one of these that's rusted, worn out, and 40 years old or 50 years old. Drag it out of the shed one more time and see if we can make it to work while these brand new ones are junk. So basically, $250 each. So if you do the math real quick, that comes to what, 700 and some dollars? Yeah, I didn't watch Sesame Street this morning, but I think it's about 750 bucks. So what a waste. And then you wonder why I can't, uh, how would you say, get ahead in the world? I was born and raised that you bettered yourself by buying new products and, you know, upgrading. Now, in the new world, you buy new products, you're going broke, you know. Oh, what, what is that, that saying? Woke, you go broke. So now we're having to go back to the old school. You want to find old and worn out because you know it's going to start and run. All right, let's get these, uh, let's go find an HEI and get this project up and running again. Okay, quick trip to the parts trailer there. Trailer 7, I think it is. So we grabbed the HEI from the 78 Chevy square body. That motor is in the Lin tractor number 2. And the other thing here, this is that funny gray color. I think it's blue. But it's not, uh, I think blue. Yeah, staff told me it was blue one time. Okay, so we did a tune-up on the 86 Chevy Suburban at one time. That motor, I think this is 2013-14. That motor is in the 38 uh, Maple Leaf. Also, too, it didn't come with the, what was it? A used uh, carbon. Yes, 2019. Okay, that's when we did the tune-up. All right. This piece here didn't come with the kit. Yes, you bought a cap with no uh, centerpiece. So what good is the tune-up? Yeah. So here we are piecing together junk to make it last one more time because in the new world, you buy new and it's junk. So I just tossed $750 of new parts that don't work into the storage trader. And then there's a $300 flywheel because it's from a 292 uh, Chevy uh, six-cylinder motor that came wrong in the wrong box. Okay, wrong part number. So there's $1,000, over $1,000 sitting in the uh, storage trader which is a total waste of money and then people wonder why i drink yes i drink professionally because i can't get parts ordered correctly everything in the new world is junk oh well let's have a drink okay i missed a few videos to make this video flow so let's insert the video of the 37 dodge tribute truck running at a high rpm but not idling Okay, it fired right up with the uh, 78 square body distributor in with the piece together uh, gray caps and stuff like that. Fired right up. Trying to set the carburetor now. I have the idle mixture screws at the front. I've had them all the way in. I had them all the way out. They're at three and a half right now. It won't stay idling, but also too, look at the filter. It went back Ooh, over here. Look at that. 
it's back to that uh, crap where it's no uh, fuel in the filter. So it's kind of interesting. I think this used fuel pump is kind of malfunctioning. You never know. Might have to just put the gas tank up on the roof and gravity feed it. Yeah, we've done that before. But the thing is, it runs better and it doesn't flutter or shake when you're on a high RPM rev. But we just can't get it to idle. The 37 Dodge original truck, okay, we last drove it in 2015. We had the same problem with it not idling, okay. I'm beginning to wonder, since how we've got to figure out these quadrajets, maybe we have the wrong needles or foo-foo things in there. Because maybe with this camshaft being three-quarter inch, maybe it sets everything off differently. So maybe it's not getting the fuel or too much fuel. It's hard to say, but we're having fun. But the main thing is it's running. <laughs> it only took two days of figuring it out and farting around. Yesterday it was running rough because of the distributor and the spark plugs. We kind of scabbed to get her some more new ones we found or reused ones. All right, let's get this thing buttoned up and then we can work on the frame. I think we have to fix the back of the frame here because it's getting harder to move around. Yeah, we might have to weld. We're going to weld some more. Okay, this is the part where we wait for the staff to arrive so we can get aggressive with the mini hoe. So her videos begin here. Wednesday morning in Hooville, it's just after 10 a.m. And as you can see, it is pretty cloudy out here and there's a bit of a wind, so it's nice. There's no sand flies or bugs. The dogs have actually been out most of the morning. They're enjoying this cool weather. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now, 16 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. Looks like it might be a nice day out here today, but we're not doing anything in the kingdom. Now it's time to head inside, make breakfast, and finish up this morning. Just after 1 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 16 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, it is pretty cloudy and windy out there right now. It looks like it's trying to rain. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out. Then around 2 p.m. I'll go do the mail and head to the kingdom. 2 p.m. and I just got the quad out. Now I'll go up and do mail and I think I might check out my blueberry spot to see how those guys are growing. Then I'll head over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Just after 2 p.m. and I finished doing mail and I was on my way to the kingdom, figured I'd stop in and check on my blueberry spot. And as you can see, they are growing pretty well. Another day or two and I'll be out here collecting berries, hopefully before anybody else gets them. As you can see, it is pretty blue over there and off into the distance as well. This whole area is covered in blueberries. Now let's head over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Forgot to mention that I don't have a blueberry picker scoop thing yet, so I will be doing all this by hand again this year. Hopefully we can make something up, that way it's a lot easier. As you can see, a bunch of the berries are ready to eat. Maybe I'll come down tonight and get a pail full, that way I can start sorting them out. But look at that, they are pretty big. Almost 2.30 and I just made it to the kingdom. Looks like there was nothing in the mail today, which is good. Now I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Pretty sure we are going to be moving a few things around. And I think we're doing something with the frame on the tribute truck. So let's go on down and see what he's up to. Down at the shop now and it looks like we are going to be pushing the frame back into place on the tribute truck. We do have to change the back end here. That way a box can go on. But for now we're going to straighten it out and then weld the plate across so we can continue moving it around. Didn't take us very long, we were able to get it pushed into place. Good thing we have the mini here. Now my dad can do a quick little weld on it, and then we can put a plate across so we can continue moving it around. Just after 2.30 and I'm officially done in the kingdom, I'll head on back into Whoville, and then I think I'll take one of my buckets up and go get some blueberries just in case they're not there tomorrow, so let's get going. 4.30 and I just got back from berry picking. I was there about a half an hour and I already filled up a container full. I would have stayed more but the sand flies are pretty bad and some people showed up. I still have to sort through them. That's why there's some green ones in there. But this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 18 degrees Celsius which is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty nice out and the wind's picking up so hopefully the sand flies go away. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out and end my day. Okay, coffee time in the kingdom and I did some quick booger wells. Nothing fancy because the back end of this frame has to be cut off and changed. Once this truck gets the 
tires required that are on like same size as the original 1984 37 dodge hot rod truck then we can determine the height and uh width and everything like that of the fenders the box and everything all right so what i did here there's no structural strength in this here okay so well they cut all the holes in it you know but you gotta remember this was a two-door sedan so the body was the strength of the frame so what i did was beat it into submission and then take some rusted steel here yeah it's quality rust and how would you say hammer it into place and then do some booger tacks okay i don't want to get carried away tacking it because i'm gonna to have to take and cut this so I'll, and plus i'll reuse that pipe one more time all right let's go have a quick coffee okay i'm over in the quick hoe shack because i forgot to mention this yesterday all right so when i grew up dad had these wings little screwdrivers you carried them in your shirt pocket right just like the nerds do with their pens all right because you're always adjusting and fixing so wings to me i first think of don garlics with his red dragster okay because he always was representing wings also too wings wins wins oh my lips i well, remember i'm english i have trouble with the english language all right so there's the carb kit I got for the Quadrajet. This is the divorce kit for the manual choke that Sir Rodney got for me. All right. Look at all the pieces. And it's got the little clips. There's not one clip that was in that thing there. Like on freaking real. So that tells you you're better off to buy the divorce kit for the choke. And then you can get all the pieces you need to, for the carb kit rebuild. All right. Now let's go have a beverage because I'm screw These lips are screwing up okay five o'clock in the kingdom and i went to the storage trailer yes we have brand new pipe brand new clamps and everything sitting on the shelf probably three four years now so that's what i did a dual exhaust but just like on my honeymoon i was a little short on this side here so i just put in a little extension on because we have to have the perfect sound the reason why i put the exhaust on is when we rub it up guess where our feet are because we're standing here underneath and our feet are going to get in a little hot or whatever. All right, so we got everything done. We sealed up the rad some more. We got the chrome air cleaner with the wrong filter in it, but that's normal. That's okay. But that's the original air cleaner we had back in 1984, and it survived it pretty good. It's probably a new new style one today. Probably wouldn't last that long. It'd be rusted out right away, but it's worked out well. Let's see what else we did today. Oh, we got some other little loose ends done. All right, let's see if we can start it up and uh, see what the exhaust sounds like. Okay, it sounds a lot better but once i get the three inch side pipes on the headers on that thing will have a nice sound to it plus we got to get it right idling also too this was a low rider car so i made notes here we have to remove the low rider blocks okay and i know for a fact that my dad cut the coil springs on the front he wanted this thing low and i mean low so we've got to change out the front tires to a little larger than like what the original one had and put the original coils back in okay we have no idea what year the Camaro this was. I think it's a 69. I remember as a kid going with a tow truck with dad, a borrowed tow truck, and picking up a car that was smashed up and dad knew the kid. And this is where all the parts come from. I'm pretty positive it's a 69 Camaro. And that's why we raised the motor up. Everything is based on the center of the wheels to the body relationship because we're making a 37 Dodge, okay tribute truck to me the same as the 37 dodge original one so we can change out this here with modern technology that was just whipped together to get it to fun because this was a rat rod back in 2022 i think it was we ripped its uh the sedan body off because it was so rusted and ugly and then we just tossed the cab on here and had some fun we had a little junkyard motor in here and it went boom boom we had fun you know sort of thing but we got to stay focused, you know, with uh, building a tribute truck, not rat rods. So that's why the oil got cut in the in the firewall here. But the, actually, the original 37 Dodge has everything down there. But this is easy to do. Okay. So over here, we just put the seats in out of the low rider sedan. 
and we had this thing so we could go boom boom around the yard that's the brake pedal gas pedal that was in their sedan also too we went on ebay and bought the speedometer and the vacuum gauge to be original like the original 37 dodge from 1984 yes and so rodney has the how would you say the uh, glove box door over there because he's going to fix it up and make it the tribute truck door you can take it to somebody you can paint really well or print and paint on the doors so everybody knows because nobody will know anything of this truck if you take it to a show or anything but something they can take a picture of then it can be shared also too this truck had been burnt a little bit at the grass fire because it came from davidson saskatchewan so this door got damaged that we have no door mechanisms or anything like that Anything for Dodge is expensive. Change it over to a 37 Chevy truck, everything's cheap. And the door window cranks and stuff like that probably get changed over to Chevy. So we're just had some fun. You know, this is looking good. We put some plexiglass windows in because there's no sense, uh, how would you say, you got to have windows and stuff. But we have the original, we got rid of the hood. We raffled it off on the Dodge uh truck site and stuff we paid all the freight out we using the parents estate money so we have to make a hood like the original 1984 1984 dodge truck and same as the grill shell we got rid of all that stuff because everything is different on the original one we don't want it to be like an original dodge truck because then it won't look like a chevy okay i'm on the other side here to find a dodge truck back in the 80s was pretty rare this one uh, came from Davidson, Saskatchewan because Dodge weren't popular in Canada. But once they found out in the internet, we found out there's lots of Dodges around and they get offended when they see mine with Chevy Motors. All right, so this is looking good. We had fun. I'm very pleased with it. I think my four day weekend is over. Yes, my four day weekend is over. We're going to have to get back to regular production and get some things done. I marked on it here in case I die or forget. It runs in August. 2024 we acquired it in 2005 from new jersey i think i think this is the one from new jersey i'm not sure but it's a give it a timeline or some reference point so 2005 till now that's 20 years so i think we did pretty good that's 19 years basically we have it up and running but that's the sad part you know people get these projects and everything i was bad for that i had too many projects and then i downsized yes so we're going to downsize some more so rose so rodney will be getting some projects here and he can uh how would you say sell them off because we got to stay focused on uh what has history value and family value to us all right let's see if we can put the hood on oh the hood is over here when it was a rat rod in 2022 we took the dodge sedan hood and put it on there okay and it guess what this uh hood leaked down the crack there water got in the carburetor because the air cleaners and everything based on chevy is tapered so the water is a natural funnel going in uh the nut where the bolt is for holding the air cleaner on so this time i got smart we can throw a hood on that way we don't have to be tarping this thing every freaking time and i also priced out the aluminum rads they're pretty good price still so it's cheaper to buy an aluminum rad than to try and fix this one here but back in the day this here being a three core uh copper brass rad that was expensive and not too many people could fix or make them now the aluminum rads are cheap you buy them you make the cradle fit and you're good to go all right let's get the hood on and tidy up for the evening okay six o'clock we're done for the day we'll get some view of the flags over there and it looks like it's going to rain it's so calm and you can hear the people of whoville arriving all right look at that and over here there we go we got a rat rod now not a tribute truck we got the rat rod so we put the hood on from the 47 dodge and <laughs> low rider looking good yes we it's either this or we tarp it all the time so we're very pleased with that we have to make the original uh, a copy of the hood for the 1984 one but that's okay all right let's go check on the flags over here because we're done for the day feels good to get a lot of loose ends done and we know that carburetor needs some love yes yeah, some love all right let's go walk the dogs drink some beer make a video and relax talk to you later